Let's check in now on Detroit City Council. They've had some big decisions on their agenda lately, and one they just made to hike water rates 7.5%. The other, a land deal between the city and the Ambassador Bridge owners has been postponed again. And this week, an editorial in the Detroit News says some council members are, quote, balking at tough decisions. And uh, since you're uh, with the Detroit News editorial yeah, I mean, board, <laughs> I'm going to start with you, Nolan. Explain that. Wh who, why are they balking at tough decisions? Well, there's still a lot of pandering going on. They knew they had to raise those rates when the when the issue came before them. If they didn't, it would throw this whole bankruptcy, post-bankruptcy process into chaos. Um, and yet, you know, they took the vote they felt the public wanted them to take instead of the responsible vote. Now they came back and most of them did did the right thing in the end, but they're going to have to 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 come to a a mindset that there are tough decisions still ahead in this bankruptcy process and they're going to have to make them without all the showboating. Do you think they're showboating, Stephen? I don't, I don't think it, uh, it's showboating. I mean, I think there were some problems about the way this, this rate hike was presented to the council in the first place. Uh, the, the Water Authority could have done a better job. Uh, city officials could have done a better job of explaining that up front to, to, to members who were understandably skeptical. Skeptical. I think, again, you know, you it's their constituents who are facing the shutoffs and things uh, that that are that are now part of this newly con configured uh, uh, water authority. Uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with them saying, "Wait, I, I want to think about this, and I want to see what effect this is going to have on them, or think about what effect it's going to have on them before." So you I do think it. there's and a the fine end, line between right balking thing. and due diligence? Well, I think I think it's okay to to think about stuff and 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 wait and say, "I want some more information before I'm gonna, I'm going to sign off on this," and in the end. We did get what we needed out of them. We, they, they voted for the for the uh, for the rate hike, avoided the the, the deficit in uh, in the in DWSD. So it, it did go that way. I mean, I, I'm I'm still in the counseling patience uh, mode with this council. If you think about what this council was like eight years ago, twelve years ago, we are light years uh, ahead of that. And but we still have light years to go before we have. The kind of legislative body that we that we all really need in Detroit, we're not going to make that jump instantly. Uh, there there are going to be bumps in the road, and there's going to be uh, things that don't go exactly the way they should immediately. You know, unspoken in all this is though is, is what happened to the four percent rate hike uh, promise that was made when the well, water, that's four percent. That's four percent. Uh, fine print. Uh, right. I mean, that, that the four percent is just about the the DWSD rate. It's not about the, the and, local rate. And I think that's what was disingenuous in the selling of this deal from the beginning. Everybody knew it wasn't going to be four percent, except no. they, you know, they they pitched that out there. We'll never have a four percent rate hike, and probably shouldn't with the infrastructure. Uh, uh, needs of the of the system, but right. to tell people up front, well, we're going to cap it at four percent. Well, you're capping the DWSD hike. At, I know, but what do people care about? They care about what goes out in the monthly check, and they're they're going to see seven to fifteen percent rate hikes. Some of routine. them even more because of, because the local uh, authorities added on. All right, let me, before we leave uh, City Council and the job that they're doing right now, I want to touch on this land deal with the city and the Maroon family and the fact that there's been so many, um, so many delays in the vote on this and um, a lot of concern from residents who live in southwest Detroit about this deal and, and with the park. Nolan Phillison. Well, the, Duggan's uh, flirting with the Maroons a little bit, I think, much to the consternation of the governor. The governor is not crazy about, uh, you know, leading on the Maroons to believe they're going to get to build a second bridge. They're not. Uh, the Canadians aren't going to approve uh, a side-by-side -side bridge for the Ambassador Bridge. They're committed to this second crossing that the International, or the Gordie Howe Bridge now, I guess we can call <laughs> it's it. It's not and, the Drake uh, anymore. <laughs> good thing. And so I, I think there's a, a little bit of, of uh, friction between the governor's office and the mayor's office over this. And, I, you know, I think... Um, you know, the mayor is, is trying to see what he can get out of the Maroons, but I, I think one thing he knows he's not going to get is a bridge. And, and well, it leaves council also sitting on this deal, too, because they're the ones that are, are waiting. Uh, well, for I it. think you have council members, specifically the one who represents that area, saying, hold on a second. Again, what does this do to constituents in that, in that area? I think this deal has been a distraction, though, from a bigger issue, which is how does the city deal with the uh, the bridge company, which is the largest private landowner in in the city, uh, or, or or close to it, uh, holder of some really problematic properties that we have not in the past been successful in getting them to do better with. Uh, I think the Duggan administration is saying, 
you know, instead of, you know, constantly punching at them and, and trying to bully them into things, let's sit down and treat them like we would anyone else. Negotiate with them, find out what they want, what we want, and come to some agreements about, to, to get some of this stuff done. The bridge question, I think, is also interesting. Uh, I think it changes a little now that the, 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 the now that the, the, the Gordy Howe Bridge is certain. You're going to have to replace the Ambassador Bridge. Uh, it's it's almost 90 years old, I think, at, at this point. It's not going to be there for another 20 or 30 years. So he's going to have to build a bridge next to that to replace the Ambassador. I think the the, the opposition we had to his bridge as an alternative to the Downriver Bridge changes now that that one's a certainty. We got to build a. We have to build a third bridge uh, to replace the ambassador. I wonder if he'll build that if the Gordy Howe Bridge starts and becomes a reality. Is is you don't think That's we need I, to? Well, I do think we we ultimately need two bridges. I just don't know that Maroon's going to build his third bridge with that bridge with that second. But you'd bridge tear the up. ambassador now. Well, then would you tear it down before you start construction? No, you no, would build the second the first, bridge, yeah. leave the ambassador like, open, build a, the, a bridge next to it. Uh, and I think that that's a different it. question because you, you could use all the same infrastructure. You're not changing traffic patterns, and that's the concern. Canada He's already started right that process. Now. I mean, all that construction he did next to the ambassador was about uh, uh, using that same infrastructure to build a new bridge. I think, the, again, the calculus changes now uh, that, that the Downriver Bridge is a certainty. I'm not sure that the opposition to the Maroons building another bridge makes, makes as much sense. All right.